So in the second to last icon in the upper ribbon, where it says add CC, that same icon we used to create the first row here in our overview table, click that add CC again, and that's going to add a second line to my overview table, immediately below my area percent one that I was just uh, working on. In this case, the identifier again is set to CC2. I've already explained why that's probably not a very useful thing for most users. I'm gonna double click that CC2 and I am going to type in USPRES for USP Resolve or Resolution. Again, remember, because this is an identifier that's kept in a database table space, you cannot use anything except alphanumeric uh, values. You can't use any special signs. Next, go to the sample or the display name, and I am going to put in USP res P over F, pass over fail. Next, again, I want to make sure that it is visible. The scope is going to be, again, at that peak or group scope level. It's going to be at the lowest level of our data. But this time, the type is not going to be a double. This, type instead, this time, instead, the type, if I use this pull-down menu, is going to be set to a string. And I'll show you why in just a moment. The unit, again, we can type in P divided by F, pass over fail. And then finally for the description, I'm going to type in USP resolution must be, and then use the greater than sign, which on most US keyboards is the shift period sign, greater than the number 13, must be greater than 13. And again, because this is a description, it's a string of alphanumeric uh, text, you can put in um, special characters like the greater than sign. That's perfectly fine because it's just a description. Now we have to create that formula. But we have to create it in such a way to use this string logic. So we're going to do that by going down to our detail section again, select the right facing arrow to the left of common functions instead, common functions, and then select the very first column function, which is program flow. And notice that when we select common functions, program flow, in the middle column under fields and functions, both choose and parentheses and then if is there. It is the if one that we are going to use. So if you double click on the if, it fills in, starts to fill in that formula in the middle window on the right hand panel. And notice that it's already built in a little bit of a help menu for you. On the description to the right of that fields and functions, it says that using the if function returns one of two values depending on the evaluation of the condition. So if the expression as a Boolean, and we'll get to that in just a moment, is true, then it gives you one object. In this case, if our USP resolution is greater than 13, I want it to flag us with a passed. But if that Boolean expression of the USP resolution does not, is not greater than 13, I want it to flag us with the second part, which is the false statement, which means it's going to say failed on our, in our table. So I filled in the if in the formula. Then I want you to use the open bracket, which is the shift nine key on your keyboard. The shift nine key. So if, and then we go back, you'll see that as soon as you open up that parentheses, you start to get a full list of every possibility here. So you can use the scroll bar on the right-hand side to go down to where it's going to say peak underscore resolution 
USP, peak underscore resolution USP, and click, double click on it, and it will fill in for you in that formula the peak underscore resolution USP. And again, notice that it fills it in in a brown font. This is a visual cue to a chemist that this is a calculation that's natively done by the software. You don't have to worry about creating your own custom formula for it. With that filled in, you then select the greater than sign, which is the shift period on most American keyboards. The shift period. Then you select, or then you type in the numerical value 13 from your keyboard, 13. So currently our formula reads, if, open parentheses, the peak underscore resolution USP greater than 13. Now put in a comma from your keyboard, a space, and then a double quotes, which on most US keyboards is from the shift single quote button. So put in double quotes, it's an open double quote. Type in the word pass. And then shift single quote again to close that double quote. So you should have double quote, pass, double quote. Then a comma, space, double quote again, fail, type in the, the word fail, end double quote again, and finally to resolve this entire formula, select the shift and zero button on most keyboards, which is the close parentheses. And notice that when you do that, both the open and the close parentheses of where it is calling for this is highlighted in your formula. This can become very advantageous when you start making very complicated types of formulas where you're nesting things inside of all of these formulas. Again, we're gonna see a, an example of that when we look at one of the demonstration files that Agilent has given you out of the box. So your new formula for the second part of this custom calculation file should read as follows. It should say if, with an open parentheses, peak underscore resolution USP, which is in a brown font, the greater than sign, which is the shift period sign on your keyboard, 13, the number 13, comma, space, double quotes, pass, end double quotes, comma, space, beginning double quotes again, fail, ending double quotes, and then end parentheses, which again is typically the um, shift zero on most US keyboards. 